Long lining, what is the benefit of long lining in particular in relation to the horse's skeleton? Why do I bang on about it? Why do other therapists really recommend it? In comparison to something like riding, long lunging. So if we look at first of all, form equals function, right? We're not gonna go into every single joint muscle in the horse's body because let's face it, that will take a while and there's plenty of books out there that you can study and understand. As a general overview though, when you are assessing your horse and trying to improve your horse's way of going, a good place to start is to try to understand how their entire body moves as one. In the beginning, I like to kind of get my eye trained, and this is how I started, by looking at the horse in three sections. So head and the neck as one section, the shoulder girdle forelimb, core as another section, the back pelvis hind limbs as your third section. Now this is just to train your eye because we all know that the horse's body moves as one and if one particular area is either out of alignment or there is a pathology that will affect the entire body. So for example if a horse has issues in its hocks we know that that will definitely infect the entire pelvic girdle, the way it moves its back, its core, the way it uses its shoulder girdle, the neck and the, co the contact as, as the rider. So we're not overlooking that part. But when we are looking at these three sections and you're watching your horse walk and watching them move, have a look at how they're holding their head and neck. Is the head and neck quite raised, elevated? What are they doing with their head? Is it straight? Is it kind of tilted to one side? Pick up on those changes in the body. If we're looking at the shoulder girdle here, in my opinion, this area is very, very misunderstood. There's the most mobile joint in the entire body over here between the shoulders called the cervical thoracic junction, in short terms, CT junction. And it's between the two shoulders where the cervical vertebra and the thoracic vertebra join. That is the most mobile body, he's sunbathing, in the entire horse's skeleton. The shoulder girdle in general, if there's any dysfunction in this area, you're gonna see horses that have quite a short choppy stride. Some horses that are classified as intermittent lameness or intermittent hopping in front. That's not a thing, guys. There's always a reason for it. There are a lot of crucial ligaments that attach from the horse's neck here, in between the shoulder blades, that really will affect, especially when we start putting tack on our horses, their soundness, the way they carry their body. Moving on from the shoulder girdle, uh, we have the thoracic spine up here, we have the abdominals, the rib cage, and this is for me the second most important area in terms of mobility in a horse. Up here, the lumbar sacral junction. This junction is very much responsible for your horse's hind limb engagement. And isn't that what we're all seeking the whole time? For the horse to be able to tilt its pelvis, to carry the weight of itself and the rider, and the more powerful it is behind, it wants me to scratch him, um, the more uh, feeling we have in front where they feel lifted up and up on the forehand. Are you talking to me? He wants me to scratch. Okay. Um, so yeah, CT junction, most mobile joint number one, lumbar sacral junction, joint number two, that's the second most mobile. If we can keep those two mobile joints functioning as best they can, we're really almost there in terms of in, in improving our horse's entire body. I must just say as a caveat, we all know that it's not just the lumbar sacral junction that helps with engagement, it's also the cranial femoral muscles which attach the front of the pelvis, the front of the hip onto the spine. And then we also know that um, in terms of hind limb from engagement to, to hind limb extension behind, all these extensor muscles all the way through the spine, you're really itchy today, um, also help with the horse's hind limb movement. Why long lining versus lunging versus riding? The key uh, and like I suppose simple way to put it is horses unfortunately despite letting us ride them from anatomy perspective have a, such weak backs guys. This area of the horse's back is probably the weakest area so when you have your thoracics there your end of your rib cage turns into your lumbar region. The thoracolumbar, lumbar sacral junction, those two areas where we want stability through the back is 
most often compromised in horses and I believe that's why we have a lot of horses that have back pain, horses that are struggling to carry the weight of the rider, struggling with their movements from either dressage perspective, jumping perspective and I believe it's because we're not focusing our attention on strengthening a horse's back. A lot of people will say to me, Nika, my horse's back feels stiff, it won't move its back. That's a twofold explanation there because as I said, the lumbar sacral junction is the joint that gives you the second most mobility. So the lumbar sacral junction is the joint that helps your horse's pelvis tilt like this, okay? For the engagement part of the back, that is purely um, led also by the abdominals, so the horse's core, and obviously the, core, the deeper muscles in the back here. If your horse's back feels rock hard and really stiff, there could be many things for it, but it's probably a good place to start would be a lack of mobility in the lumbar sacral junction and a lack of mobility in the CT junction. Because you will probably agree, and if you don't, that's also fine, but if your horse feels really stiff through the back, they feel really heavy on the forehand. And that's why those two junctions there are really important to understand and to keep as mobile as we can. So, lunging in my opinion, if you do lunging correctly and you know how to lunge your horse with no gadgets, gadgets for me are, they're not a bad thing, they all have a place, but they can really be used too often to make a horse appear on the bit and working over its back, but in my again opinion, depending on how these aids are used, they fix the horse's way of going. So actually they don't allow the horse's back to really move up and down as they naturally would when we ride them, when we start lunging them with training aids on. Lunging as well, it depends again on your skill and your horse's level of training, we're just going round and round and round in circles. And I find owners are often bored, horses are often bored. If you're bored as an owner of, lung of lunging, your horse is bored, okay? They pick up on absolutely everything that we're doing with them. I, at the same time, lunging has its place, but from a benefit perspective, if you're lunging a horse that's very one-sided, for example, on the left rein they feel fine, this is the most common thing I see, on the right rein they're motorbiking around the arena, falling out through the, ins through the right shoulder, they want to look to the outside, to the left, now, if you think about that, if you then go and put fixed training aids on and keep lunging that horse in a circle, in a circle, in a circle, without teaching them to find their own balance, without teaching them to understand that they can move their shoulder girdle right to left, they can keep that CT junction mobilized, but you're not gonna do that on a constant circle. And I actually find that's why horses that do lunge a lot, owners don't tend to find any difference in their horse's way of going and there's sometimes or can be limited improvement in the horse's strength through their back and core stability or core engagement. That's in some cases though, we all know that it's individual depending on your skill set. Why I love long lining is because it mimics as best we can the riding because of where we attach the ropes at the bottom of the ring and, and it can mimic the, the, rider's hat, the rider's legs. What I also like about it is because of the progression, you can go from nothing on their back to placing a roller, to placing a saddle, to even then eventually having the rider. It's a really good way of conditioning the horse's back and getting them used to carrying the weight of a rider. In my opinion, the number one cause of lameness in horses is tack, ill-fitting tack. And not only that, so even if you have tack that's maybe well fitted, you could have a saddle that sits completely straight with bridle that is causing no pressure points. But if your horse conformationally and posturally has a very weak back, no matter what saddle you put on there, it's not gonna strengthen the back. That is where we really need to be doing our groundwork and our long lining work. Progressing from a horse that's never long lined, never had any form of rope work, a great way to start is actually working from the nose as we're doing here today. You can tell I have the rope attached to the nose instead of the bit. That has, in my opinion, again, a better connection from the head and the neck, affecting the head and neck positioning 
compared to when we attach lunge lines or ropes to the horse's bit, which is a lot of pressure, guys. These guys are super sensitive. So this is a great way of progressing, getting your horse used to, even a horse that's never lunged, or if you want to retrain your horse lunging properly, this is a much better way, in my opinion, again, because we are working from the nose. And as you can see with my circles, I'm not staying constant, so I'm not lunging in one spot. Sorry, no offense to the BHS, <laughs> but I like walking with my horse, not always following a constant circle. And I'm making sure that my belly button stays by his shoulder. If I walk in front of his shoulder, I will slow him down, cut him up. Where if I go behind his shoulder, I'm driving him forward with my body, with my intention. If I'm gonna just change the rein, I'm gonna walk backwards, I'm inviting him in, opening him up to the other side. Good lad, now we're on to the left rein. So yeah, this is a great way you can progress your training before you start long lining. How can you actually tell if your horses are improving without riding them? For me, that comes with monitoring. So first of all, taking pictures of your horse, standing them up on, on a level surface, taking pictures of their body, looking for any asymmetries. The second thing is filming yourself working your horse to see how they are moving in their entire body and those sections we broke down earlier. And a really simple, again, it's subjective, but you can, you know your horse better than anyone, is the cheese board test. I've not gone crazy. So first of all, let's talk about three kinds of uh, types of cheese. Um, uh, we should do that again. Just keep talking. Get it out. Is the cheese board test. I've not gone crazy. Right. Let's imagine cheddar cheese. How does cheddar cheese feel, right? It's quite hard to touch. There's no give in it. The second kind of cheese I want you to think of is brie, a nice soft brie. If you imagine eating brie with the layer on top, the kind of um, outer layer of the cheese, if you feel that cheese, it's almost got a bit of a bounce to it. There's a bit of strength to it, but your fingers kind of bounce back. And then I want you to imagine a really gooey, overripe brie that you stick your hand into it, there's absolutely no give, your hand will go completely in. So once you've got your three and you visualize how those cheeses feel, let's, let's now relate that to our horse's muscle. Do this test before you work your horse and after to see the difference in their muscle tone. For example, if I'm going to feel along these glutes up here, and how you would just feel the muscle test is run your hand quite lightly, so a light pressure, using your fingertips, just apply a bit of pressure up and down. So, and just in the beginning, in a, in a pattern from this bone up to the top there. Just feel, keeping the same pressure, the different bounce in the muscle. And then you would do the same for maybe over here. How does that muscle feel? The hamstrings, how do they feel? The best starting point is to feel all over your horse's body and get used to, oh, that there feels a little bit tighter than that bit there. How do I know it feels tighter? Over here, this feels a bit more like cheddar cheese to me. There's not much give in the muscle here. When I get a little bit higher up here, that's more like soft, sorry, like, like good eating brie. So the muscle bounces back, okay? If I was to come down here, the muscle here, this feels like gooey brie. Can you see how my finger's completely going into the muscle? Yeah? Get to know what your horse's normal is. Do this testing exercise before and after work to see if maybe the muscle up here that feels a bit like cheddar, after you've worked, does it feel a bit like brie? A lot of people come to me saying that their horse's rib cage feels so solid. The back is weak, they have no core. They're struggling to build muscle through the back. This could be down to a variety of reasons and causes and also the management of the training and what you do with your horse on a daily basis, for me, makes a fundamental difference to your horse's entire posture, entire body. So I like to, I've kind of created like a, a little acronym, I suppose you want, which is the three S's. When it comes to retraining your horse's back or retraining any part of their body, I like to follow this process in my mind, which is the three S's. 
stability, strength, suppleness. For me, we need to start with stability. So this is stability of the pelvic girdle, stability of the shoulder girdle, shoulder girdles here, pelvic girdles here. I have many vlogs, guys, in more detail about the anatomy of these girdles. Visit my website and you can have a real good read in terms of the anatomy of those girdles. But once we've got stability of those two major girdles, the reason that's important is because then we have better function of the CT junction in between here and the lumbar sacral junction in front of the pelvis. Your stability exercises are things like postural stable based exercises or exercises in an arena or in the field where you're working from the nose and you don't have any gadgets on. Stability exercises are balancing exercises. So for example, a grey exercise and there's a progression to this. For example, this is a balancing exercise where you're asking your horse to come onto three legs. I'm applying a little bit of pressure here to the withers, not too much, but the movement through the core, the movement through the pelvis in terms of activating specific muscle groups, uh, that exercise is great for. So those are my kind of examples of stability. Another great um, progression from stability is to go into a bit of strength exercises. All of this is done in walk. So your strength exercises is when you can definitely start applying either from a bit more uh, pressure from the nose in hand with no gadgets or your long lining. And that means walking along the arena, doing the walking serpentines, the figures of eights, the shallow loops, five, 10, 15 meter shallow loops. Before you just throw a bunch of poles out, go and try an exercise of single poles. So for example, random pole placement, asking your horse to test his coordination, his proprioception, his awareness, setting up simple things like cone exercises, getting them to walk around the cone exercises. Those are my progression from postural exercises to from stability to strength then you can start to play around with more more poles so poles in a in a in a pattern i've got many of these examples online and then we go into the suppleness and that is also when you as the rider as the handler the long liner are more comfortable with your aids you're more consistent in asking the right turn to the left rein from the long lining then you can start to test your horse's suppleness and improve your horse's suppleness so that's my progression, stability, strength, suppleness, the three S's. Suppleness in horses, how long does it take to improve your horse's suppleness? Before we focus on that question, I'm gonna roll reverse it and ask you yourself. How many riders, and I'm included, suffer from tight hamstrings, tight hips? So let's do a challenge. Let's call this the hamstring challenge. Wherever you are right now, stand up for me and Feet together, weight nice and even. Try and touch your toes. Do this with me, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> Go down and just try and touch your toes, see how far you're gonna get. Are you watching me, yeah? So wherever you get to, I'd like you to challenge yourself for the next however long it takes, six, eight weeks, every single day for three minutes. I'd like you to do an exercise where you set a timer and you just hang there as comfortable as you can, keeping your knees nice and straight and see how far you'll get. Then when the 30 seconds is over, take a break and go again and go again. Do this for six weeks and monitor if you can go from wherever you are, say if you're up here, to your toes, maybe to your hand, maybe to your palm and eventually maybe even your whole head is touching your knees. He's thinking, what are you doing? Let me know how long that takes. And then you might have an idea of how long it actually takes for your horse to become supple. A lot of us tend to do an exercise and we think, well, that was short lived. Guys, it takes time. Changing muscle, changing ligament takes time. We do have some research though, and it's coming more and more apparent that if we do those baited mobilization exercises, so when you bring the horse stood nice and square in front, and you bring the chin with like a, with a treat or something like that, all the way down, down, down. You watch his back coming up. Hopefully I've got no treats. So he's actually being very good here. Good boy, a bit more. There it is, there it is, good man. Doing those exercises consistently is key 
five, six days a week for six weeks, we have evidence to show that the multifidus muscle, which is a deep postural muscle, will increase in the cross-sectional area by just doing these exercises alone. So there's a really some, some research we have to show that doing these exercises, there is some point to them and they do improve your horse's posture.